There's a reason indirect lighting looks so good in interior design. By bouncing light off of a surface, it diffuses it and makes it softer and more pleasing. But there's a rift. On one side is using indirect lighting as part of architecture, building it recessed into a floor or wall for a really premium look. And on the other side is um, the dorm room solution, just sort of putting string lights around for some ambiance. So with today's project, I'm aiming to fill that middle ground to create some indirect lighting for my apartment that has that really premium look, but is both renter friendly and affordable. Act one, a brief demonstration. So in interior design, we can generally think of lighting as being more pleasing the softer that it is. And you can think of the softness as being related to the, the surface area of the light that you're actually seeing. So if we take a small source like a bulb, or we'll use this as an example, it's a relatively harsh light. But if we take a layer of diffusion, something kind of like a lampshade, and we cover the light with it, part of what it's doing is it's spreading that light out over a much larger surface area. See how much softer that is on my skin? So with indirect lighting, all we're doing is that instead of adding that layer of diffusion, we are bouncing the light off of the surface. So if I bounce it against the wall here, it gets softer because from your perspective, this is not the light source. The wall is actually the light source. So with recessed lighting or cove lighting, all we're doing is we're taking a light like this and we are hiding it out of view. And this is a really premium look that I'm trying to emulate just because it, it creates this sort of warm, soft, diffuse ambiance. And what's nice is recessed lighting on the floor like this sort of gives all your furniture this nice silhouette and backlight. So to recreate this, let's enter the world of 12 volt light strips. Act two, let there be light. So technically all you need to get started is just a strand of LED lights like these. Now, as any college student knows, they're very affordable, but my recommendation is that for interior design, don't get RGB colored lights because even if they offer a white mode, it's not gonna look as nice as a strand that's just built around white. And so their color's not too blue and cool. Look for 3200 K, 3200 Kelvin which is that really nice warm tungsten color that's still not orange. And they typically come with an adhesive strand on the back. So chances are you might have some hidden places around your house where you can just rig these up, like maybe behind some furniture or underneath a kitchen countertop. But if you're willing to mount these more permanently, let's say you own your home, there is a ton of mounting hardware out there that's designed for them. There are some angled pieces designed replacing corners, but there's also just a lot of baseboards and molding that is designed to accept them. However, I'm gonna create something that is renter friendly. I'm going to create illuminated baseboards. We don't actually have baseboards in our apartment, which is pretty uncommon, and we're obviously not gonna install them in a place that we're renting. So it'll basically just be a standalone wall runner that will just sit up against the corner of the floor and the wall. That over there is the stretch of wall that I have in mind for it, but it'll be super easy to relocate and take with us to future apartments. It's really only made of two pieces. There's the baseboard that you can actually see, and then there's this wooden piece of corner molding that I'm just repurposing as the stand and the little place that the strip of lights is gonna sit and I'm just gonna use some short wood screws to attach them together. Act three, connect the dots. But regardless of whether you're interested in this idea for the baseboard, let's talk about the wiring. So many places that you might wanna put your lights, you're not gonna have a convenient power outlet sitting right there. And ugly exposed wires is just a really quick way to make the build look cheap. So in America, we have 120 volt alternating current coming out of the wall sockets, but light strands like these are 12 volt direct current, which is why you need that little box, that power supply in the middle to convert the current. Your light strip may or may not come with one like this, but they're super easy to find and you can find them in white as well. 
and it'll probably attach your light strip with one of these little barrel connectors. This most popular one that we're going to be using today is 5.5 millimeters by 2.1 millimeters, which is just the outer and inner diameter. So if you're trying to extend your wiring to get to an outlet, you could just use a normal extension cord. And there are many out there that are designed to look nicer. But if you're willing to tinker with wiring or daisy chaining multiple light strands together or whatever custom implementation you want, we can just add more cable. And this is easier to add on the 12 volt side of the power supply, which is just safer to work with. And that will just look like removing the extension cord and placing that wire in, in between our light strand and the power supply. I found this website called Color Cord that just has a ton of different options for fabric covered wire. There's also just a ton of other supplies for DIY lighting if you're finding yourself inspired. So I bought this length of white wire from them and compared to just a normal plastic covered wire, I really don't mind the look of this. I, I think that it looks like an intentional part of the design if you were to see it. And to keep everything modular and easily removable, I'm just gonna add a male and female barrel to either end of this cable. And instead of soldering barrels on, I wanted to show you how easy it is to use this hardware. All you do is after you've stripped the wire, you just put it into this housing and tighten down on the screw. And with that, you have your own custom barrel extender. There's actually one more useful thing we can add to the wiring chain. For about 20 bucks, you can get yourself a wireless remote and dimmer. It just comes with those same exact barrel connectors so we can just insert it in between our lights and the power supply. And then your wiring is complete and it's controlled by this little remote. Act four, the build. All right, so you've already seen the main components, but today I put it all together. So the first step was to attach the corner molding to the actual baseboard. And uh, when I started drilling the screws, I of course immediately split the board, I guess was just using too much torque. I tried some nails, but they were just a little too short to really stick. And then I tried some wood glue, but I didn't really have the, the right clamps to go down the whole length of it and uh, wait for it to dry. So I just went back to the screws and by just going slowly, it was really no problem. And then I just laid out the light strip next to it and cut it to length. So these light strips are designed to be cut along these little lines so that none of the actual diodes get interrupted. And after trimming that, I just connected the power supply to the cable, to the dimmer, to the light switch, and verified that it all still works. And then I just removed the backing on the adhesive, pressed it all down so that it would fire up. And that was the whole build. It took like maybe a half an hour. Act five, the reveal. And if you found this video helpful, giving a like is like giving me a tiny donation and I would really appreciate it. Okay, let's see how the project came out. All right, there it is, my renter-friendly illuminated baseboard. I think it definitely achieves the effect that I was after. And because it's DIY, I can easily move it around or modify it in the future. And when it's not on during the day, I think that at first glance, it just looks like a normal baseboard. So if you wanna recreate this, I would of course be flattered. So everything is linked below and here are my full expenses for the project. But either way, I hope that this video was informational and inspirational so that you could apply some of these things to your own project because that's the great thing about it being diy you can make it the correct length that you need you can pick out your own color of the cord whatever you want my name is jackson casimero i make videos about home goods food design kind of whatever i'm interested in i've got a fun video coming up where a friend and i compete to see who can make the better meal using only three ingredients but that's it for today, so I will catch you next time.